This is a follow-up to my previous video, where I showed how to create this line of falling dominoes using geometry nodes. So if you want a better understanding of how it works, I suggest that you go check out that video first. If not, you can just copy this node tree, since I will use it as a base for the loop animation, with some modifications. This part of the node tree is responsible for instancing dominoes, and this part is responsible for rotating the dominoes. Something to note though is that I'm using a collection info node to instance multiple objects. These objects are just two domino bricks, but you can use any rectangular shape, it doesn't really matter. Just keep in mind that the bricks will rotate around their origin points, so having them offset like this is a good idea. Add a plane, then press S, X, 2, to scale it on the X axis. Then press Ctrl A and select Scale to apply the scale. In Edit mode, make sure that Auto Merge is enabled. Then press S, then Y, then 0 to turn the plane into a line. Exit Edit mode and right click, then select Convert to Curve. Also, rotate the object 180 degrees on the Z axis. Add a Yomant Nodes modifier to the curve, and if you have already made the node tree, select it in a dropdown. Otherwise, pause here and copy it. Before moving on, I will modify some values of the original system. Instead of using a random value node to randomly select objects to instance, I will use a value node. That way I can pick just one object to instance, and it's important for the loop to work. I will also set the length of the resample curve node to 0.1. This just makes it easier to work with when it's time to animate. Add a scale instances node, an index node, an attribute statistics node, a map range node, and a math node set to sign. The attribute statistics node can be used to read information about the connected geometry. So connect the resampled curve to the geometry socket. Then connect the index node to the attribute socket. Now the outputs are related to the attribute and the geometry that is connected. And what we want to know is what the maximum index is. So connect the max output to the map range node. Then connect the map range node to the sign node. And finally connect the sign node to the scale socket of the scale instances node. Enable clamp in the sign node and disable clamp on the map range node. Also, connect the index node to the value socket of the map range node. The sign node outputs an alternating gradient, going from negative 1 to 1 and back, so by modifying the values of the map range node, we can affect the frequency of the sine wave. These are the values I will use, but feel free to mess around with them until you get a spread that you like. The next step is to move the bricks along the line, while making sure that the sine wave stays in place. To do this, add a math node set to add before the sine node, and a transform node at the end of the node tree. The add node can be used to move the peak of the sine wave, so as we move the line of dominoes in one direction, we have to move the sine wave in the other direction. Before we start adding keyframes though, go to the preferences, and in the animation section, Make sure that the default interpolation is set to linear. On frame 1 of the timeline, insert a keyframe in the transform node by hovering over the translation values and pressing I. Add a keyframe to the add node as well. Go to frame 10 in the timeline, and in the X translation of the transform node, change it from 0 to 0 0.1, then add a keyframe like before. Why 0 0.1? Well, the value you use here needs to be the same value as the length of the resample curve, in order for the effect to loop seamlessly. And I chose 0.1, because it's a nice round number that is easy to work with. Next, we need to move the sine wave to counteract the translation, and we do this by either increasing or decreasing the value of the add node. Just make sure that the first frame and the tenth frame look about the same. This is the value that I will use. Once you're happy with how it looks, add a keyframe to the add node like before. Then set the end frame of the timeline to 9. The reason for that is that if we include the 10th frame in the loop, we would have two identical frames, and the result would be a stuttering loop. If we press play on the timeline, we can see that it's looping correctly. The final step is to animate the falling of the bricks, and with my original setup, 
I have already exposed the values needed for that out here in the modifiers tab by connecting the respective values to the group input in the node tree. I will increase the fall value until the middle brick starts to move. Then I will add a keyframe on frame 1 by hovering over the value and pressing I like before. On frame 10, I will increase the value by 1 and again add a keyframe. And there you have it. See you next time.